everybody. Welcome back to another fun-filled and exhilarating episode of the Pregame Network Podcast. This is your gracious host, Dan, with his bestest bud in the whole wide world, Anthony. You uh, just know how to flatter me. Episode, <laughs> this is episode 26 of the Pregame Network, and we're going to talk about video games and stuff that we have seen in the past week and a half or so, and go over it. So okay. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna start off. I've been playing a fuckload of Dark Tide lately. I something something sucked me in again. Like aside from the uh, update. Yeah, it was a new update, and I, I was telling you, man. Just you got once you actually like rope people in, you're gonna end up playing it again. You know, and we were teasing it yeah. like like the last two to three weeks, we would like touch on it. Like Dark Tide, is it leaving? Is it staying? Are you gonna play? Like what's going on? And you finally got everyone in to to do yeah. like occasional stuff it is some of the most mo- like most fun moment to moment gameplay i have ever played in the game and mm-hmm. it's very addicting because like even when they came out with the skill trees like last year um there's like so much to experiment with and and, and play around with and i'm just like trying out different builds and stuff of guns like i would never i would never have used before uh and it's just uh, it just it got a took in me real good I'm almost, I'm very close to breaking 200 hours in the game oh, so damn. far. So, yeah, I've like, I really just, I just play it because I like it. And the pennant system is great because, like, it gives me, like, a carrot to chase. I know, like, we talk about the whole yeah. stick and carrot thing a lot. Um, it's good to have but the pennant system gives, yeah. But, like, it's, some of the penances are really fucking difficult. Um, and, like, uh, something that this kind of t- sticks out as strange to me is like you can only do a handful of them in a private match. Don't really know why that is, but yeah, that's probably a to thing. avoid like cheating or uh, not cheating. What's the yeah. word? Uh, uh, Exploits or something. Boosting, boosting or something like that. No, yeah, yeah possibly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I've just been playing a fuck ton of Dark Tide, so that's like been my main squeeze right now, um, mm. and I jumped. I dipped the toe back into Destiny to see what the new episode was like um and i like i am just not really i don't know man i want to play the new dungeon because there's a new dungeon out um you shut up (laughs) but it's like it's it's definitely has lost its grip on me which is fine you know like i put in 10 years i put in my time and i beat it's better it's better to have multiple things to play you don't need to live under the destiny thumb i i was actually going to ask you about that because i know they alongside they like there's you know they they did this new episode or whatever and at the same time they kind of like repackaged the entirety of the base game into like like some $200 package or something ridiculous like that so i was curious to see what that landscape was looking like both from content and player base and available packages and stuff yeah well the game has definitely changed a lot and a lot of ways for the better but a lot of ways not you know for the worse um but it's you know for someone like me who's who's played since the beta of Destiny 1 and now that like the core story is wrapped up and everything is kind of done uh, there just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot for me to experience anymore and like yeah I can mm-hmm. chase the new weapons and get the new, different roles and whatnot and it's still fun like you know I, I was playing I played it for like two hours earlier this morning just to just because like I wanted something to play with the podcast on in the background and not yeah. have to focus too hard because like I've, I mean this is true for a lot of Destiny players. Like I've kind of like pierced the veil of, of like the glass ceiling of the game. So like, I have anything that I would need to take on any content in the game. So like, the new weapons that they're offering for the new season is not really that much of an incentive for me. I want to mm-hmm. play the new dungeon because that's always fun, and yeah, I content. do like to get the. Yeah, I do like to get the new gear and the new weapons for the dungeons and then for the raids. Like, that's, like, that is what Destiny is to me. Um, mm-hmm. But for all the seasonal stuff, it's like, eh, like, you know, whatever. Uh, so I've, I've definitely been taking a step away from Destiny lately. Yeah, I mean, honestly, based on what you told me there, where you kind of laid it out as, like, a, uh, I guess, end game player. You know, you always had, you know, you were always on top of the end game. It is interesting to see that this episode comes out and like the rewards aren't necessarily as enticing and right. you know my my knee jerk reaction is to look at that and say it's possible that their focus with this episodic structure is to keep those mid-level players engaged well it definitely is and like they've that. also said that yeah. they 
once their like the codename Frontiers thing comes to be, I, did we talk about that ever? Uh, we we talked about Frontiers a couple times back when like there wasn't really too much known about it. Right. Well, they they said that they're changing their story structure or like their um, their I guess their campaign. You know, it's not going to be a linear campaign anymore. Like, it's really going to be more of an open world type of deal where you go and you experience the story piece that you want to experience, which mm. is cool. And, like, there's no, there's not going to be any more, oh, go talk to this person, go fetch this item, go back and talk to that person, progress the quest step, go talk to this person. Like, it, apparently they're not doing that anymore. Um, okay. I don't really know what that means, but they're, that they're going to a different uh, like campaign structure. Like so structure, we'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah, I, I, um, I'll, I'll be honest. I look at that and like I don't want to sit here and chew your ear off about Destiny for the entirety of today. But I, what, what I will say is that it sounds like they're kind of uprooting a little bit of the MMO stuff. Because optimally, in an MMO, you would have that. You would always have that linear path to come back to with other stuff on the side. So it seems mm -hmm. like almost instead of like adding to the stuff on the side, they took all the resources from the linear campaign and just threw it to the, to the side stuff. That's what it sounds like to me. It's almost as if you bought an expansion for an MMO and it was, like, mainly side quests and, like, maybe, like, some new PvP shit. Yeah, I mean, I think that the issues with, like, replayability in the game are definitely more systemic than anything else. Um, and I keep on going back to, like, what they are building towards with the Light and versus Darkness saga, but... Now that it's done, you know, you still need a reason to, to to do something. And and the handful of seasonal weapons that, oh, this thing will reload a little bit faster. Oh, you could apply more jolt to a target just by shooting instead of reloading and then shooting it. Um, it it's not enough for me personally anymore. Uh, and all all the people that I used to play with, they're not really online anymore. And I mm. I would still like hop in and play a dungeon or a raid because I think it's fun and I do still enjoy enjoy that. And there's also like a mission that you have to have two people for to get uh, like a certain exotic item. So mm -hmm. I've only done it one time and it's farmable, but I can't farm for it because the people that I always play with are not on anymore. And I'm not really willing to go out of my way to find an LFG group for yeah. that at, at this point. Like that's just not worth it to me anymore. No, I get that. Yeah. So I guess the whole point of this rant was... You know, I I dipped the toe back into Destiny to see what the new content is like because I bought the collector's edition of the Final Shape, so I already paid for the next year's worth of content. So I I'm still gonna try it one way or the other, um, but it's just not really hitting for me right now. And I don't honestly don't even know like what would drag me back into being like into being as into it as I was like six months ago. Uh, so I, I don't yeah I, mean, I don't really have any uh, that. The only thing I would say about that is, like, I, I do feel that, I mean, they could potentially, I mean, it, it still kind of has its hooks in you, even if it's not, like, as strong. Right. They no, would just, yeah. they, they, they would need a, a strong return to the structure that brought you there in the first place. I said that, I said this when the, when the story wrapped, where it was just like, you know, that's a kind of hurdle that any game would struggle. It's like, okay, the saga that everyone's been playing with through the ups and downs, the lows and highs that everybody was able to, you know stick with even when things got really bad it's like okay well we still have this experience that we got to get through right and it mm -hmm. doesn't sound like this kickoff to this new saga this new phase is as strong as it needs to be in order to keep long-term players happy like I, I do think this is going to be a jumping off point for a lot of people just based on my my view of it because it's like you don't have that foundational hook anymore it's just like ah, i gotta see how it ends they, like that's not there yeah. anymore it's it's and it sounds like they're targeting different demographics with I just think that's enough 100%. to yeah yeah, yeah. that's 100 yeah. percent accurate because there was before the final shape launched in like the destiny sphere of like content creators and influencers and blah blah, blah that was a huge point of of the huge topic of conversation was there is going to be a big chunk of the player base that finishes the final shape, sees how it ends, plays the last raid, and then just dips, and then never comes back. And mm -hmm. that was inescapable. Like, there was no way that was never going to happen. Um, so I think that, you know, the, the hook for me originally was, I guess, ultimately the story and the gameplay. And now the story is gone, the gameplay is there, which is great, but 
the characters and the storylines that I kind of fell in love with over the past decade are are not there anymore. So whatever this next saga is for this game, it's it has got to be good. You know, like I don't, I'll still jump in and try it. Like I, there's probably not a world that I wouldn't try it. Um, but it's I can it's got to be good. <laughs> I can I can think like like you're kind of locked in now because you're you're all paid up essentially. You know, there's yeah. gonna come a point in time where you aren't, and the content that they're offering just you're gonna be looking at that that money that they want, and you're gonna and you're gonna hesitate, and that's mm. the beginning of the end. You yeah, know, no, until it I goes don't ridiculous you. sale or something like that. You know, yeah, I don't doubt that. Uh, but like, there a big factor for me also would be like, oh, if the the clan that i used to play with if they message me because i'm still in the same discord if they were like oh come play this raid with us but you have to buy it that would be a factor like i'm not going to pay whatever like 60 dollars for uh content that i don't think is is worth it so i don't know we'll see i this is just going in circles um gotcha, yeah. so yeah so i've been playing a lot of dark tide uh i did <laughs> the toe back into destiny and i progressed ragnarok a little bit a little bit more uh yeah. but i just been I think the dark tide has been taking up that time for me. So. That's fair. I mean, as long as you're trying yeah. different things, you know. In six yeah. months, when you when you're still when you've put like two thousand hours into dark tide, we'll have some kind of intervention. Like, no, you're just <laughs> replacing one addiction with another. Let's, let's slow down. But until then, you're free to enjoy because it, it is something different than the norm for you. Oh, thank you for the past, Dad. No problem, bud. I'm here. I'm, I'm here <laughs> for you always. And for what it's worth, I I. I definitely would like to jump into the finals again because season four is actually pretty good. I, I played it a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's so much better with a team. Like I, it, oh, of I course, can't do of it course. Solo. Yeah. Listen, listen. You know, you know my deal. You just give me a heads up, give me some time to yeah. install it, and I'm there to play. I'm there to try mm -hmm. until something. It's it's very rare that I get put off by something in its entirety, like to the point where it's like you know I, I just can't stick it out. I normally stick it out until everybody else gets bored. If it's something that I don't uh -huh. like. There have been very few occasions where you'll get me to sit down and uh, like I'll just be like, eh, I don't want this. Yeah, yeah that was definitely. But it, the final, yeah, the finals, <laughs> the finals isn't one of those. This is, I guess, the moral <laughs> of the story is I enjoyed the finals, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, that's pretty much everything that I've been doing this past mm. week. What about you? Um, so a lot of the same for me. Got Street Fighter, got Gauntlet. Got um, the horror games we've been going through this week, uh, this uh, for this month. We finally wrapped up Silent Hill Four, which was nice. Uh, me and Harrison mm -hmm. played a survival horror game called Lost in Vivo, which is just Lost like a, it's it's an indie thing. You you've probably never heard of it. It's an older indie one too, where it's and it's it was okay for what it is. I'm not keen on those short indie experiences. I'm a little weird like that. But it was nice for mm -hmm. what it is. The dev is kind of a nut job, so that that was kind of off putting too. But it is what it is. Um, other than that, I actually, I, I checked, um, this Insiders program, right? The one on Xbox. And I found out because I had signed up a while ago that it automatically opts me into certain things. And I tried, uh, what is it called? The Last Berserker Kaz Kazan? Or I've heard Kazan, of this. The Last Berserker? Yeah, it got, it got announced a while ago. Um, I tried it. I don't have much to say about it. Uh, because it's a roguelike, uh, not roguelike, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, Dark Souls like, <laughs> like. I always get my likes confused because I, I typically don't care for all of them. But yeah, it's a Dark Souls like. Um, I always going into those whenever I do try them. I always hope it's like maybe they're trying to be more action and they're just afraid to do a full action game. And it's not. It's it's very kind of by the numbers as far as that's concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. My biggest disappointment is that this is actually a retrofitted version of another game that was announced six-ish years ago called Project BBQ which was a more down-to-earth action game like it was over top, it was flashy because they're all part of this universe from Dungeon Fighter Online you ever hear about this? Uh, Dungeon Fighter Online sounds familiar but yes. not not beyond that It's it's like you know, you know games like uh, Final Fight or Streets of Rage, right? Yeah. Imagine that, only uh, all of the characters have, like, MMO RPG elements, like skills and shit like that, and the worlds are massive, and there's missions to do, and it's, uh, it's just an MMO, right? This mm -hmm. came out back when we were in high school, I think. Oh, wow. Um, it's, it's been around for a while. It is 
huge in Korea. <laughs> it never really it never really took off in the United States. I knew a few guys that tried playing and tried to get me to play because it has like some fighting game elements in there. But anyway, it's it's a series that's been around for a while. I've even played a fighting game from it. But like my my whole point was like there's not much to say about it. It's like a souls like game and all the other elements that you would enjoy, you would need to really be, be into this, this dungeon fighter series. And it's, you know, I'm not necessarily as big. I was interested back then, but it never hooked me. And now it's been, you know, like 13, 14 years since I last tried it. So it's like, you know, not impossible, but it, there's no draw for me. And right. the one thing I wanted from it got, you know, taken out of it in development it used to be a more traditional action game. So that's the, the one thing I tried, and I'm not even sure if I liked it or if I was disappointed by it. It's just a very, uh, eh, it's a thing, you know? Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> Ex excitingly, I also noticed I'm in the Frag Punk uh, beta too, what? so I'll be trying Why? that. Yeah. It's just part of the Insiders uh, fucking uh, thing that I, yeah, wait, I, I opted in a while. You have to do it. I, I have to try it. It's I chose, okay. I looked at the two, I had Kazan and I had Frag it, and I'm just like, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Kazan. All right. He didn't even chuckle at the uh, fact that I said frag it, which is what we 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 promised each other. That's what we were gonna call frag punk. I can't believe. Oh it. yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked about frag punk in so long because it's, it. it's, it's just the xbox concord i think i think it's yeah. it's it's not going to be as upsetting to xbox as concord was to sony which uh, that's another thing we can talk about there's rumors of concord. but anyway that's all i played that's all i played oh my we've, god we've, i we've been here forgot for... about that that's genius <laughs> we've been here for a hot second we can move on to the real stuff now but uh, okay yeah, pretty, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah. my god uh all right well it's something that i i'm looking forward to this coming week is uh the steam next fest uh oh yeah well steam steam that fe steam next fest in general but specifically mm -hmm. delta force is going to be playable uh, finally like yes. openly that's right on steam next fest and i'm very 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 curious to see what they have on offer um mm -hmm. for for this game because it it looks like it has just enough of the battlefield dna but just little enough of its like specialists that 2042 had to mm -hmm. make it a really worthy competitor to just the battlefield ip because clearly dice doesn't know what the fuck they want um mm -hmm. and even with the the announcement of the new battlefield game from vince ampella of like oh we're going back to our roots and clearly the specialists weren't the way to go mm -hmm. all right man whatever like i don't really trust dice at all anymore I, they have to see something or play something to even be remotely sold on their new project. But yeah. at least with Delta Force, it look like the abilities don't look um, like intrusive enough to to like. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like they don't, they don't, they're not in your face enough where it's gonna really take away from the the core gameplay. But also the extraction mode that they're gonna be launching with also, which is like a big. I, I like those modes, as you know. Like DMZ was great. I really wish that they would have supported DMZ because that that was, I feel like that mode had a lot of potential. And even when they had like they added those new maps, like that underground bunker um, thing that you had to like mm -hmm. find your way into, or yes. they had uh, uh, what else was there? There was one other map where they we like you could go and, and explore. Was it? Uh, mm, why am I blanking on this? Was it Ashika Island? Did they ever do that for DMZ? I don't think they did. Um, no, it was it was something. It was something else different. Like you could do, um, uh, what I forgot was it the a fucking Shika? Almazra. No, it was Almazra. It was that like bunker fifty two or something like that. Or uh -huh. I don't remember what. It was I called. get all the maps. But there was one other up, thing. Yeah. yeah, there was one other. Th there was one other map or playable area that you could do, but I just don't remember what it was. But the point being is like. DMZ had a lot of potential. They definitely could have supported it. Uh, why they didn't, I don't know. It, like the the community that played it really liked it. They, I I just don't understand why they let it die. Um, yeah. But my point being, Delta Force has their own extraction mode that is, it seems close enough to the casualness of DMZ, but enough of like uh, enough systems and strategy involved that like you you can't just run in guns blazing you have to be smart about it uh, and i really like the whole contract system and you know going 
collect this very hyper specific item that you can only find in one spot but once you pick it up everybody knows where you are like i just like mm-hmm. i like the game mode um yeah yeah they also have bots sprinkled in also so you don't feel like you're just gonna get rinsed every single time you play the game <laughs> uh, which is my whole problem with fucking warzone but that's yeah. a conversation for a different day. Yeah, anyway, so a... yeah, Delta Force is coming to Steam Next yes. Fest on October 14th. I'm very excited okay. to try it. Very cool. Um, very cool. And uh, you should definitely install it on, I think, well, no, it's on Steam. You'd have to do it on Steam. I don't know if your computer is going to handle that. Eh, we'll see what happens. But like I said, I've been, I've, every time we brought it up, it's always like, I'm willing to give it a shot. It, it, it looks yeah. like something that we can well, enjoy no at least entry. a little bit. It's a huge yeah. plus. Yeah, exactly. So oh. yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely try and give that a shot when it, when it hits. Um... Well, that was like a tiny thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, do you um, have something small? Because I mean, I, I can get two small things out back to back. Uh, All right. One, one being like I kind of touched on it when we were talking about what we were playing. Uh, did you hear the little bit of Concord rumors going around? That it's like supposedly making a comeback. They're like trying to restructure yeah. the game or something. The the Steam files, like if you if you know where to look, you can see like internal like patches. And oh, the game has been go. the games have been getting updated in the background, so I guess we'll see what happens there. Like I said, like uh, one of the leading theories that the three of us had when we talked about it was that it would come back as a free to play. I was anticipating a much longer downtime. The fact that they're mm-hmm. even updating it in the background kind of you know means to me that it's just like they're scrambling. I think they right. want to have Concord in a playable state before uh, Secret Level launches. I think that's mm-hmm. like I think that's somewhere in the back of their mind. They're just like we can't have this episode of the show we partnered with hit before if the game is not fucking out <laughs> i think that i think that's i i legitimately think that's a factor in 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 some I board room out there you. yeah, yeah. So, it's yeah, just that's an just, embarrassment <laughs> oh yeah it absolutely is uh and i am once again i'm 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 before we move on from concord again because I, I i honestly aside from how funny it is i don't like talking about it because it's just everything that's wrong with the industry yeah but, i know but I am saying this again right now. If and when Concord returns, and we're going to have a lot of people saying, you know, oh, we just didn't give it a chance the first time. Oh, it was so Gosh. misunderstood when it first launched. Oh, Shut yeah, the fuck up. It's all bullshit. It's a bland, crappy mess that might play better than it looks. That's really it. It's not It's not some misunderstood masterpiece. It's a flop that they are going to try to salvage because they spent almost half a billion on it. That's all. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see where that one goes. I really don't yeah. want to talk about Concord anymore. I don't want to talk it fucking about sucks all the wind out of my sails. Yeah, we'll talk about something uh, uh, more fun. Uh, my double double question for you, really. Uh, Tomb Raider. Double answer. Yeah. Um, number one, how much experience do you with, do you have with Tomb Raider? And I mean the series wide, not the new Uncharted like ones. I mean just as a series. Um, not much. Not much. Sure. I always knew what they were growing up, but I've really never played like the older ones. I did play um, the first two Crystal Dynamic uh, Tomb Raider games. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, but um, I never played the third one. Yeah, I, I, have, a, I have a bit it just more felt like <laughs> Uncharted, like knockoff Uncharted, honestly. Yeah, that that's I mean that's kind of what it is when they rebooted uh, a Tomb Raider. That's kind of what it came down to. I also um, I, I I played the first two games in anticipation of buying the third one, and I have the third one unopened somewhere. I think oh, I bought really? that launch day. I'm honestly not sure, but yeah, it's laying around somewhere. I still haven't I still haven't gone back and played it. And I, I my takeaway is kind of the same. It is kind of like just an Uncharted ripoff. Um, yeah. It's open world, which is nice. Where Uncharted is more linear, but it and, but you know different strokes, different folks, whatever. Uh, I my experience with Tomb Raider is a little bit more um, a little bit more varied. Uh, my cousin, when I was much younger, I, I would watch her play uh, the Tomb Raider games. One of the many games I saw her play on the PlayStation, which kind of uh, helped shape some of my interests as a kid. When it came to like, oh, you know, I had a Nintendo sixty four, I wanted a PlayStation. Tomb Raider was one of the games I always wanted to try. It always scared the mm-hmm. shit out of me because that's just the kind of it <laughs> is a kid, really. Yeah, but anyway, so I ended up much later playing one, two, three, and I think I tried four, and then I the Crystal Dynamic games I played one and two. Um, now. Uh, have you? The second question for you is: Have you been paying attention to any of the new Tomb Raider stuff? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything okay. in the zeitgeist about Tomb so, Raider. So it's it's because it's such a flat line of an attempt that they're making. Uh, basically, who the fuck owns it now? I think it's Amazon owns it, right? Doesn't Amazon own Tomb Raider as a whole? Uh, I think so. It's, e- it's either they own it as a whole or they own the TV rights because they recently put out an animated series. Um, and at the same time, they did a remaster collection of one to three, 
they just announced a remaster collection of 4, 5, and 6, and I think 4, 5, and 6, they, they weren't numbered initially. I think that's, um... The hell is it? That's I think it's Last Revelation, Chronicles, and Angel of Darkness. I think those are the three. And you know they're not as good as the original three, but they're all right. Um, mm -hmm. And at the same time, they have the, the new animated series coming out, and I think they're working on a new live action one. It's just word of mouth and like just excitement and marketing around this is so like dull and flat. Like I haven't heard. I've heard next. To I haven't heard about anything about it. Yeah. And the crazy thing to me is it's it's like. It's getting hit pretty hard by all the cultural shit out there. Naturally. Because it, it, it's like, you know, Tomb Raider. It's about this, you know, archaeologist that goes around. And, you know, she's always been rather blasé about just, like, blowing away whatever native population or, you know, element are out there. You know, everybody likes to joke. It's just, like, during one of her games, she finds, like, dinosaurs. They still exist. And she just fucking murders all of them. You know, she's stealing <laughs> relics from tombs. And that just doesn't fly in current year. So now they have, like, you know, people shaming her and, like, saying, oh, you gotta bring it to a museum or you gotta put it back. And she's not even all that interested in tomb raiding. You know, they're retconning characters just to be gay. They're freaking... Oh, the, the new logo for the Tomb Raider games looks like the fucking Xbox Live Gold logo. It's so bland and uninteresting. <laughs> the an the animated series, I've seen some scenes. It looks just... It's, it's outsourced to, like, people in Texas and Korea to freaking look like Japanese animation, but it really doesn't. It's all of it just... It's... it's, it's it all looks like crap. But I guess the old games are getting remastered. The, the first collection was kind of censored, so I'm not going to be buying it, but I guess I'll be trying it again. I just... I don't know. So what I was curious to see if... Once again, I always like to get your perspective on certain things, because I'm, I'm always kind of paying attention to legacy franchises to see what's going on with them. And I, I it does not surprise me that you have not heard of any of the Tomb Raider endeavors that are going on right now because it's they it, it it almost feels like they're not trying. It feels like they got yeah. it and they made like some bland corporate stuff just to like I guess like milk a little extra cash out of it or remind people that they have the series. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean I think Tomb Raider is one of those series that was really popular during um like the PlayStation one and two maybe. Oh but yeah, then, absolutely. Like, you know, once Uncharted came out, I think that was kinda it. Like it's not it's really not the same thing i i guess you can make the argument that tomb raider is uh uh like more dark and gritty and it is really not yeah, much humor or not like lightheartedness about it the same way that on that there is in, 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 in uncharted it's, it's kind of pulpy yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good yeah. way to describe and, it. And, and and my whole thing is like, you know, like you you said like uncharted kind of came in and did its thing. I do believe that Tomb Raider with the right leadership could kind of fill the void that Uncharted left now, you know, and yeah. not in the crystal dynamics way where it's kind of like a rip off and it's kind of just like an open world thing. I mean, like if you take some of that style and identity from those first three games and kind of almost do what Crash did and just like make like a fourth one almost, you know, in that style or like an updated version of that style. You would you would get like a pretty decent game that people like. I'm not gonna say like yeah. you you would have the Uncharted slot overnight, but that 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 franchise has potential. It's just it's I don't I don't like saying this. I don't say this lightly. It's the wrong time for it. There are certain games you just can't make, and I'm not saying that you can't and shouldn't. I'm saying you can't because the people involved will ruin it, as we're seeing with what's going on with it right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I think that like what Crystal Dynamics did with Tomb Raider was fine it wasn't like groundbreaking or anything by any stretch of the imagination yeah. um but amazon's got to stop with the games okay they, they don't know what they're doing it's it's yeah, it's like an, it's, uh, all, all, all the their endeavors turn out to be bland like slop yeah. and when they get their hands on publishing rights for things that aren't developed in the west they end up just ruining them for through the localization process. It's just, like they're not good for games. I don't know if it's. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're they're not a gaming company, so part of it's that, but also part of it is like they're taking that like super safe corporate approach to almost every project that they've put out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I mean we're just over like thirty minutes into this, so yeah. I think I want to take a bite out of the thing that I like the big thing By that happened means. this week that I wanted to talk about. Um, I am very, very, very intrigued and eagerly watching uh, this new shift that Halo is making to the Unreal Engine. 
Mm, I okay. that was a rumor for a long time after nice. the disaster that was the launch of Halo Infinite. Yeah, and I think we've been talking about it for like two years at this point, right? At yeah, it's been a, a it's been a while. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's been a bit. It's been like it's been floating around in like the Halo communities for for a little bit, but like nothing was ever confirmed. Mm -hmm. And then what? Like a couple days ago or, or earlier this week, you know. 343 who doesn't even exist anymore they are no longer 343 they are mm -hmm. now halo studios uh, confirmed that they are moving away from slip space engine they're going to unreal engine 5 mm -hmm. um for i guess the the freedom that they want to make halo games and mm -hmm. for because well, like the slip space engine was made by a bunch of contractors and no one really knew how to do anything with it and then yeah. everyone left and they were left with this fucking spaghetti code that took forever to even put in any like you know simple or worthwhile patch um and it just it just wasn't working it just the way that that, that 343 or microsoft or whoever handled the development of halo infinite it just was it was a disaster um and ironically mm -hmm. had the best feeling gameplay since halo 3 which is yep. I, fucking crazy to me um mm -hmm. <laughs> but Okay, so yeah, they're they're moving from Slipspace to Unreal, and yes. the little tech demo thing that they put out. It did you watch it? It's like a six minute video. I did. Okay, so it it it's looking really pretty. Like I I'm, I like the way that it looks. Um, I I think it's a good move overall. However, and mm -hmm. then big asterisk with this. However, I think that they need to be real careful with how the game is gonna feel in on engine yeah. in Unreal. Yes. Um, because the biggest thing with Halo is that it feels distinctly Halo. Like mm -hmm. at the time, and they even said this in the in this uh, tech demo video or announcement, whatever you want to call it. They said that when Halo came out, it was like a showcase of the graphics that the Xbox could 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 do. Like it's it was a very pretty game for the time. Yes. It was it was a rev revolutionary game for the time, really. But like the graphics were no slouch and. That's like one of the pillars that Halo as a game stood on for a long time. And mm -hmm. I think that the Slip Space engine was, it, it looked really good, but it wasn't, but a lot of it also looked flat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that Unreal is a really good choice for them to pivot to. But if it doesn't feel like Halo in the same way that Halo Infinite felt like the old school Halos, then I think it could be a big mistake. Um, and the graphics isn't everything, obviously. Like, people fucking love Halo for the story. Like, the, the, yes. the lore is super rich. I've read several books, uh, uh, several Halo books, and it's it's really, really good. It's a fascinating universe. Um, but if, this, if the story and the feel isn't there, then, like, it's going to be rough. So yeah. I think it's a good move overall, but I don't really know until they put something out so what are your thoughts on that so my thought when i heard this uh i, w I was kind of saying you know we've been talking about for a while like hey this is gonna happen or something like that is very likely right um yeah. i look at it like this uh i do think the switch to unreal will be good <laughs> internally as in i mm -hmm. think that with the talent they've lost the people they're bringing on, especially with the, I, you know, one of the things that got highlighted when this whole shift happened is who's in charge of uh, the new Halo Studios, which I'm pretty sure that didn't 343 start as Halo Studios. No, they, I honestly they were, remember they were, at this point. It was yeah, a but, bunch uh, of people from Bungie that split off to make 343 because okay. they didn't want to stop making Halo games. And then mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like all the same people that are now quote unquote Halo Studios, mm -hmm. but they. They just said that they are changing the way that they make Halo games, which, like you just said, I think it's a really good move, especially internally, because now these people will know the game engine in and out and be able mm -hmm. to make quick fixes or adjustments or whatever. So anyway, go yes, on. Yes, yes. So it is it is good internally because it's it, it, one of the things I've mentioned to you and we've talked about plenty of times is that a lot of these talent-gutted studios can't really handle making or using in-house engines that's that's yeah. one thing that i've kind of highlighted so i think a lot of the talent that they have is going to be a lot more comfortable with unreal engine now that being said you mentioned that when you saw it you said that it looked very pretty and it looked very nice right mm -hmm. and i'm inclined to agree with you 
I'm not as wowed as you are. I don't think. I mean, um, I'm not, I, I it, wouldn't it, say wow. Yeah, That's you don't sound wow. I, I didn't mean to imply that. I mean, if there was a metric scale of wowed from one to ten, you're probably <laughs> at like a six. I'm closer yeah, to like a fair. three, um, just because it's just like graphics I'm have just put shocked toad. That they finally did it. Yeah. No. I mean, it was even even a switch like that, which is easier for them internally, is going to take a while. Um, basically kind of have the same concerns that you do, right? Where it's like, feel. Feel is super important. The mm -hmm. Slipspace engine, say whatever you will about it, still had its roots in Blam, which is the engine that most of the Halo series used. If not all of it, I think okay. all of it did. I didn't one know that three, it had its roots did. in Yes, in it's engine. derived from it. It's like, listen, it's not one-to-one, -one, obviously, but it still came from that. Like, for whatever right. much they took. I forget the exact amount. But, uh, basically, we're officially detached entirely yeah. From from the original yeah, risky. Halo games, yeah, very risky, risky move, yeah. which is fine. Um, I'm I'm okay with risk because people and developers don't take risks in this industry anymore, and it's a huge fucking problem with the products that we receive. It's actually funny because it, like what I'm gonna say, you're gonna like roll your eyes at me. It feels like a safe risk because they're literally saying like <laughs> we could we could continue down this path of fumbling with you know, an engine that, you know, we created just for the series, or we could try and throw everything at Unreal because we know at the very least people are going to be able to handle Unreal better than an in-house engine, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I it's it's a dangerous move because the one thing we said about Infinite the entire time is like, eh, you know, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, but the game feels mighty fine. And yeah. we don't, that safety net is now gone. Um, I don't know. It's when I looked at that, I said like, that's not the, that's not the shift I was looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. I just I it's it's it, it's tough because like I don't have recourse for them because like what are you gonna do go out and like hand pick like the best people still left in the industry to save Halo like no they don't really have that option you know you're still hiring on like LinkedIn and shit like you're just you're getting whatever you can get from you know whoever is coming your way so it's like you know this I mean it's gonna be more consistent I don't know it's it's I don't want to say. My, my opinion on this whole thing is I'm somewhere in between meh and this isn't good. Um, I do think it's interesting that they are actually, like, giving us, like, hey, we're pushing ahead now. You know, we're doing things with Halo again instead of just spinning our wheels. Um, yeah. I guess to, to summarize my feelings is it's almost like, you know how certain game difficulties when you play a video game, right? Right. When you select a lower difficulty, you're locked out of higher rewards. Uh, yeah. I feel yeah, like, like they the just that, did that. Uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like they just did that to themselves. It's like, yeah, the difficulty is lower. You're probably going to be able to. You're probably going to be able to develop things a little bit easier because everybody will be on an industry standard instead of your own hardware. But now it's like I don't think you can excel. You know, like I don't in think they, what uh, way? Like I don't I, think like, that's very situational. I think they they've like not that they could potentially have this with the current structure they have, but it's like. I think they, they have locked themselves out of having, like, that wow factor, that unique factor. I think that mm -hmm. whatever happens next with Halo, even if it's the best Halo it can be under these circumstances, it wouldn't necessarily be as good as, like, you know, a Halo 2, a Halo 3, or a Halo Infinite if it was managed properly, you know? So, yeah. I don't know. Like, I think I think it's kind of by the numbers at this point. I think that it's... it's they've... I don't want to say I don't want to say you know necessarily it could be the worst thing ever. I just think they've uprooted Halo for the first time, arguably for the third time, depending on who you ask. And I don't think it's going to pay off quite as well as people would think, especially considering how long we've been talking about it. Well, I think that it'll. I th I don't know about it paying dividends, but I think it's going to pay off in a positive way, any way you slice it, yeah, which no, is I th I th obviously a good thing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's like so many of the other things we talk about. It's like, yeah, it'll be positive, but, like, we're in such, like, a dire place, you know, where it's mm -hmm. just, like, it's, like, you don't need, like, like a small net gain. You need, like, a, a knockout. You need, like, a, a home run. You need something big. 
and I, I don't think I don't think this move is going to produce that because they definitely haven't addressed like their their um their talent issue or their employee issue just by glancing inside and looking at who's running, who's hiring, who's talking, who's making the decisions. So it's really just like the same shitty people with less talent, but on an engine that they can get everybody to cooperate on. And I don't I, I just I don't know. I don't know. Every, everybody like I, I saw a lot of comments about it, like, you know, the, the tech demo they showed. Right. And they're just like. Oh my god, this looks so amazing. You know, it looks like I heard somebody just say like this game, this new demo looks the way I remember Halo looking and I'm just like, no, it's just it's unreal now. Like I think back to, you know, I'm not a huge I'm not as huge a Halo guy as everybody would think, right? I love 3. Okay. I think 2 is a lot of fun. I think 1 is a lot of fun. I think they're both re- it has its place as a legacy, right? And right. when I look back and I think of those older Halos, there's a very clear and distinct style in how things look and how things feel. It's like if you look at the, the backgrounds and the environments and the enemies and how everything just kind of comes together, like that's not Unreal. That's not like the Unreal default assets and like building slightly off of Unreal's defaults, which is what they're going to end up doing. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's just... It's it's probably going to be more stable going forward the series, but I think it 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 did lose a core part of its identity with this shift. Uh, yeah, maybe. But again, I, I really got to see what. Oh, of uh, course, it's it's way too early know, to preemptively yeah, judge. I'm oh. just I'm kind of I'm I'm you got I'm not saying like this isn't me sitting here saying the next Halo is going to be a seven out of ten. I'm not saying that. I'm right. saying the next Halo will likely not be anything better than an eight point five. I think they've locked themselves <laughs> out of that. I think I think who knows where it's going to be, but I don't think it's going to be you know it's not going to be a Halo. I'm okay with an eight point five as long as everything works out of the box. I suppose, like, but like, I you mean, know what I mean. I, I, I you gotta understand. I get exactly where you're coming from. I just I still have my my um, expectations and my preferences and my um, my grading from like when games were just consistently good. So like mm-hmm. I agree with you consistency out of the box is great but is that where our standard should be <laughs> i <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the, the, i okay <laughs> I, no that's not where our i'm not no listen be. listen you gotta understand i'm not saying you have no standards dan you fucking idiot i'm saying like i you are seeing the bright side of a very shitty situation I'm just grading grading it objectively based on the history of our fucking our our medium and, here and so is the fucking dynamic of our relationship on this podcast. Yeah, I swear to fucking true. God. That is very true. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so like, that... that... Like, <laughs> I would look on the bright side, and you, you would be like, eh, they've locked themselves out of better things. <laughs> exactly. That's just, you know, listen, that's just how it is. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Like, you know, but it's like I said, I, I think it was Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 4, and ODST and Reach. I think we're all on blam. Mm-hmm. I think. I think actually. I, th- I swear. I think they're all on Blam, but I think Havoc got was in the mix at some point. The Havoc engine. I think Havoc that was in three. Sounds familiar. I think, that, uh, I think they used it in three a little bit because there's there's a difference between frameworks and engines and how they work in ten- in tandem. Um, but yeah, it was like it like this is a this is an engine. Slip Space had its it w- was derived from Blam at a certain point, and Blam has its roots in like the old times. Like it was made like when like id software is in their prime and like i think I, marathon I think that the Dest- well yeah a marathon yes I, I i also think that the destiny engine a orig- like the tiger engine originated in blam as well i think it's a heavily modified version me. yeah that surprised me yeah but yeah that, that's my take on it <clears throat> so i mean that was like the big thing that i wanted to touch on because like that is a pretty huge announcement that uh 343 or i'm sorry halo studios put out mm-hmm. this week um you know because yeah. like like you said, that could just change the core of how, of what this game is, of what this IP yeah. is, and it's yeah. it's super risky, but it's a safe risk, like you said. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, what else? Uh, what else do you have? I know you got something else. Uh, there were two companies in the news this week for very different reasons. Um, you had. CD Projekt Red and Nexon were both in the news. Which one do you want first? Give me Nexon first, because I like CDPR. Okay. So, uh, with Nexon, and Joe, if you're listening, I'm not simping (laughs) for the company. I'm not even saying they're 100% on the level after this. 
I'm just saying they said something I found interesting. CEO okay. of Nexon came out to say that user feedback is more important than numbers and outdated data when it comes to putting games together. Even more so now with budgets the way that they are. They're very inflated budgets. And I'm just like, yeah, that makes sense. And then for some reason, this was big news. I have no idea why. It's like, yeah, you should probably listen to your players. You shouldn't blindly listen to your players because that's how you end up with what happened to Warzone during the Cold War days or how you end up with, like, you know, psychos on Twitter tanking your company. But, yeah, you should listen to your players. And, you know, everybody's throwing up the, the, the first Descendant um, uh, pictures of, like, the new, you know, costumes, all the fan service. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a place you should probably listen to your customers because you know they're the ones that are going to be putting the hours and you got to make sure they're looking at something they like i'm just like yeah that makes sense i don't know why people were upset by that but yeah and once again joe I'm not simping for the company i'm just saying they, they said something sure. that's interesting and more companies should be saying this but that was nexon that was it was really like you know kind of crazy yeah but uh you know now i get to tell you uh something that's not polar opposite but it's kind of the opposite with cd project red did uh did you hear about CD Projekt Red this week? I, I'm assuming you 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 haven't given how you uh, mentioned. No, it to me. I just the nature of my life right now. I, I it's like things will pop up in my Google feed, but like I I can't really go out and look, look for things. Perfectly um, fine. Yeah. So what? Uh, so what happened with now, CDPR? You had the CEO of CD oh boy. Project Red having a bit Wait, of you know what? I think I did hear something. But yes, because he it was it was he was saying shit on Twitter. He was in a little bit of a meltdown. Apparently. Oh wait, was this yes. uh, uh, about people like being hateful and everything in the community, something like that? S something like that. But you know that that's just that that could mean anything, you know, because I, we yeah. have developers saying that every week. So, I have no idea how this happened. People seem to think, Dan, that oh boy. they have hiring <laughs> practices and internal programs that are based more around identity than merit. You know? And, and, the, and people okay. were, upset, were upset about right, this. this going? And he saw people talking about that, and he had this to say. He said, Seems we live in times where anyone can record complete nonsense and make a story out of it. CD Projekt Red, talent leaving? We have the lowest rotation of people in recent years. DEI-driven recruitment? We, ha we hire based on merit, talent, merit and talent alone because it enables us to work with our games more efficiently and remain cutting edge tech wise the witcher's three director left he left more than two years ago now can we stop looking for conspiracy theories and go back to making cool stuff that's what he had to say he said this in response to multiple people listing the company as one of the many that are in trouble because of the strain on the industry between bad policies talent bleed and all these other things now he says this dan you know, he's denying it. You know, it's fair. It's his company, right? He says these things. And I immediately flash back to them being one of the first companies to put out a video about how they were compliant with all of this crap. And <laughs> since that video, they've been in the news constantly about all the stuff they do relating to these things. Like, if you if you go on any... If you go to their website right now, one of the tabs is all about, you know, all this, you know, diversity crap and inclusion and all that wonderful stuff. If you go to any of their, like, business insider pages, they list the same shit. If you apply to a job with them, they list the same shit. The videos are still up on their YouTube page. It's just... I, I, I looked at the comments. Everybody is ripping them apart. Like, they're saying, the reason we think this is because you tell us that you think this. You know? So it's just like... I. I don't know what to really say to that that level of delusion <laughs> because they're very they're very clearly involved in this and people are rightfully uh, raking them over the coals. But one thing I wanted to say about Project Red, aside from their ass backwards policy, right, is that Cyberpunk, right? Yeah. A bit of a troubled product, a bit of a troubled development, I would say, right? Mm -hmm. Um They followed that up by announcing like five projects. Do you remember this? Um Yes, but yeah, not they, uh, well. <laughs> yeah, they, they announced Witcher 4, uh, yeah. a, a spinoff in the Cyberpunk universe, a Cyberpunk uh, a, a sequel, 2078. Right? Uh, there was two other small projects. And I'm just like, what is going on in that company? That they could have such an incredibly troubled development. They, they don't hire based on merit. They hire based on, you know, all these quotas and whatnot. And immediately after pushing, stretching themselves too thin over one project, they announced five projects and have done basically nothing since. Misdirection. 
I, I just don't get this company. I don't understand it. Like they, you, like they had so much goodwill after the Witcher series wrapped up, and it's like I've never seen a company just like oh, they fucking flounder. lit that shit on fire real quick. Yeah, it was crazy. Like it's still like the scope of the the S nine stuff with uh, Cyberpunk and just like the debacle that was that game on launch and like the refunds they needed to do and it not running well and still really doesn't run all that great in certain systems. But to have them follow that up immediately by jumping into the worst cultural trends of our lifetime and then yeah. just like now they're like lying about it. It's like I don't know why you would lie about that kind of thing to my face when it's just like you were one of the first companies to go public and basically like reveal that this stuff was going on because you thought you were in the right and now you're and it's still on your website Mm. What what gives, you know? that So that, that was just, those two companies were in the news. You know, one for like, hey, we should listen to our customers. And the other one just basically looking at customer complaints and going, nuh-uh. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, God, so, I, yes. I just, I'm I felt, so I felt kind of bad because of... you, you're just like, <laughs> I like CD Projekt Red. We'll go with that one last. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that because it turns out yeah. there was a positive thing about Nexon and then it was a fucking... <laughs> Oh, don't say positive too loudly. Joe might think you're simping for the company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, everything is like just... Yeah, we need to stop this as a, as a species because we're just going to fucking fall like the yeah. Roman Empire. Yeah, and... we, 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 we've been pretty good in keeping it to our little section with the game stuff, but obviously, like, these policies, they're not good for anything literally yeah. anything it's yeah. it's i'm gonna sit here and kvetch because you know i'm entitled to Vetch. like sitting here bitching about my fucking video games because i've earned that right damn it but <laughs> it's you know it's just like it's it doesn't help anybody just just cut it out just stop just fucking stop Ash. um you know, we should just yeah. open up our own game development studio and then we can and then we can pick and choose exactly who we hire one day daniel yeah day. <laughs> i was waiting for it yeah um <laughs> And do you have anything else? I have like two small things. Uh, no, not really. I mean, Halo was a thing thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it's fair. Um, it is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, uh, so kind of like hot off the heels of uh, what's it called? Of of like the whole CD Projekt Red diversity bullshit. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw glimpses of this. I don't pay attention to this stuff too, too much because it's really just like it's a passing thing, and the events it happens at are just not interesting at all to me. Um, the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. was oh, upset. Boy. Yeah, she oh, was. She was. He was uh, upset. Oh, she. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was upset. She was. Uh, <laughs> she was at some event ranting about how various supremacist groups were banding oh, together to harass them. So by supremacist, she means you and me. We're we're part of that. <laughs> we're just just by dint of our positions in this in this uh, in this industry that we're we're part of that group. So I hope you uh, I hope you you know get get your check for, from this fucking mob that we're part of um and she also ranted about uh, a certain mean twitter guy you know that bought the platform and lets this and let this happen so she she was angry and very upset at him um and i noticed that since then the the website where they used to proudly list all of their partners and all of the games they worked on it's looking a little vacant like they're hiding it now. <laughs> I th so I thought that was nice that these people are on the run. It's like, I look at it this way. It's like, you don't receive any of the pressure that you think you do, but I wish that you did because you fucking deserve it. <laughs> like you guys are absent. Like there's no, like I said this way back when we started talking about the topic, co consultation companies should not exist. Like there's no reason for them. There really isn't. Yeah. Just you, there should be nothing meddling with the creative process. It's a group. It's a, it's, you know, a project happens. It's a beautiful process where you create something, be it in games and music and TV and movies, and you you get the fuck off. You know, the fucking team, you wor they work it out, they craft this fine vision. They don't need to hand it off to some third party that can say, like, ooh, this won't fly well, ooh, this doesn't. And guess what? They keep telling me they're not doing it anyway, so, like, they're literally doing nothing and shouldn't exist in the first place, so who cares? <laughs> And it's actually funny because they're not alone because I noticed the Silent Hill 2 remake came out, and I'm not going to rant about it this week, but uh, there was oh, one of those God. guys at a different company called Hit Detection, and he was bragging, like, like after the game launched, he's like, I'm now, now that the game is out, I'm proud to announce that, you know, I, I was involved in the process, and now they're in there, and I'm just like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I've seen some parts of the game that definitely smell like a consultation company. So, mm -hmm. But they're on the back foot. They're getting pushed back. They're not going anywhere yet. But they they will they are no longer in the we are comfortable enough to brag about it 
you know so that's like yeah you know if if we were at level one we're now at level two these people are starting to scramble and look for the look for a dark place to hide mm -hmm. well um, i mean good riddance honestly like this is yeah they, crazy they, they, Can't they, they, stop they, this. <laughs> yeah they, they serve they serve no fucking purpose you, you basically blackmail people some of these companies are dreadful where they they will say that we just we got to scare developers that was what the the ceo of sweet baby Inc., she's most famous for now is she said you know scare developers if you have to to like let them know that your services are needed i'm really like, eh. do they hear yeah. themselves when they speak they think they're, like, they're I... they think and you're gonna you, you're gonna hear this and you're gonna go uh they think that they are on the right side of history in some yeah, conflict that they yeah, keep telling me I, I doesn't know. exist. Like, I just, like, <laughs> come on. You're telling me that it doesn't exist, but at the same time you're saying you are the right one in this thing that doesn't exist? Get, 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 get the fuck over yourself, seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, like, those guys are on the back foot. And, um, you know, it, it, I, one last thing mm -hmm. before we wrap for the day, just because, you know, it's... Uh, did you hear about the Steam thing going on? Uh, I guess not. Okay. They uh they I mean, recently updated. Well, go ahead. No, I mean, I'm on I'm on Steam like almost every day, so I yeah, feel like I would have heard something. It's it's because it's Wait a, a back end. Is this because of I, something popped up for me the other day? It was like, oh, we changed our terms and services, and it, like, yes, it, I thought it was like like a virus or something, okay. um, so, because it was so out of character for Steam. Yes. So that is something that that was involved in their TOS, where they basically opted you out of forced arbitration which is that's just a consumer thing for you that's good for you if you accepted that that's basically just means in the future if there is a case brought against um one of the developers you cannot be forced into arbitration which basically means you're you're they 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 settle it out of court and also without you so that you get mm -hmm. screwed you know so it's like if you were entitled to something you are no longer entitled because they i don't even know how that's a fucking thing but basically steam updated the tos where like developers can't do that to you anymore essentially but oh good okay yes but the thing that people were upset about is because of a law passed in california what steam does now is they make it blatantly clear now when you buy a game on steam that you are just buying the license of the game mm -hmm. they make it abundantly clear and this is something that i wanted to talk to you about on a different episode but yeah, still, we'll, we'll like talk about the topic as, as a whole as a whole yeah yes. okay we will absolutely that's something we will one day when we have the time and you're back and situated and we have a better grasp on it that's that's something that deserves its own conversation but yeah what i want to say about it now is that people are upset like they were freaking out like obviously i would too if i wasn't well versed in this and i just turned on steam and i went to buy it's like oh by the way you're not Paying, you're not buying the game you're buying the license right you'd freak the fuck out too if you didn't know about that right because this would this retroactively applies to everything you've ever purchased in steam right and here's my thing about that because people were getting mad at steam and valve um it's always been like this it's really yeah. all i have to say it's Literally always, always been, been like this been like, yeah yeah yep. it's just now they are legally obligated to tell you steam from the very beginning had because this is just the digital landscape is they sell you the license it's never been you own the product you are just well, that was with anything a license digital it. like it, exactly that's what i'm saying plays anything digitally or owns anything digitally yeah. really should understand that yes. um it, it's pretty obvious yeah. Like obviously and, you don't own the the thing that like you don't have the disc in your hand that you could just pop exactly. into a Blu-ray player. Yes. Um anyway, and, can continue. No, no, and all I'm saying is like if you're upset by this, you rightfully should be, but know that it's a industry-wide issue that you just didn't know about or didn't believe. So it's like it's mm -hmm. if it I'm in 100% agreement, but like the anger is just aimed in the wrong direction because that's just an industry thing. And the last thing I'll say, and this is something that you know, everybody's, you know, uh, popularized, always brought up. And if you were in the know, you were in the know. If buying isn't owning, then mm -hmm. pirating isn't stealing. That's all. That's, that's kind of my last, my last take on that, you know? But uh, people have brought up, it's like, you know, when you buy from uh, GOG, you actually get installers that you can take offline. And I'm like, that's, that's a good little thing. They're a bit of a smaller storefront, so they don't, they're not as you know tapped in as steam they don't get all the deals or the licenses but you know that that is one alternative they're not entirely infallible because they also sometimes have censorship issues where like you know they'll cave like everybody else but like if you wanted a storefront where you can buy these games and just and own them and have the installers forever you got to take care of the installers yourself that is one option gog but uh 
yeah, that, that's all I had to say. Is like it's it's it, it came out, and I think a lot of people were just they're aiming their anger the wrong way. They're aiming it at Valve and Steve when it's always been like this, and it's not in their yeah. hands. So yeah, well, that's just the that's just the case of like an uninformed consumer. Yeah, and I don't really know what, what you could do about that. Yeah, I mean, listen, the one thing the one thing I will highlight about all this, this this shit show that we've been going through, every single negative thing that we've been dealing with in the last decade, is that. Everybody's at a different level. You know, it sucks to be me because I'm at the top and like I notice these things right away. And then a little bit below me, you know, you notice things after a certain point, but you know, you don't necessarily, you're, you don't have your finger on the pulse as far as like shady shit. And then as mm. you go deeper and deeper, you hit the consumer level. And now at a certain point, it's just everybody's going to be pissed and know and knowledgeable about these issues. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's like the one bright side. When everybody's angry, everybody knows, I guess, you know. So, <laughs> and that applies to yeah. fucking everything, which is why you have so many, like, hot button issues now. Is like, you'll say something and it's just, it's, they, they change into controversies that you just hear about week over week. So, but. Uh, new cycle. Yeah, yeah but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, like I said, like, I, like I always say. Yeah, like I always say, things are going to get better, but just, you know, got to hunker down in the meantime. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I guess that does it for this episode. So yes, for does. the five people out there that are listening, uh, thank oh, you for listening. we get better numbers than that. <laughs> we, get between, I kid, I kid. we get between 60 and 100 when, you know, it runs its course. And then, like, once a week, we'll get, like, you know, people still watch, like, the first 10, first 20. Like, they every now and again, it pops up. There's people out there listening. All right, that's good. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, but we'll be back again next week for mm -hmm. uh, more shenanigans. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, bye. Bye bye.